Hey there. So I think it's time for another AWS video. Um, I really like playing with Amazon Web Services. Uh, it, I, I really think that uh, this is the way of a lot of things going forward. So um, I, I wanted to first, I wanted to cover two things. Uh, number one, what courses I use and where I use them. Uh, and then number two, uh, the problems I've had with those courses. So, and maybe I'll do that kind of in a mixed order. So the Learner Lab. Uh, the Learner Lab is where I put students in that just want to play for whatever class they're in. We use this for our uh, web development class, so that or web design, so that they can play with HTML on S3 or in Apache or whatever they would like. We also have a C panel, um, but this is an option for them. Uh, and then they can they can play and learn more. Uh, in that class, we have an assignment where they're supposed to do something else uh, that we haven't taught them in class. And part of that could be installing Apache and running things through Apache, or installing WordPress, or uh, there's a lot of different options. Um, cr using a Lambda uh, to, to be a form uh, is uh, one of the, the options in the class for one of the assignments. Uh, but they can do even even more. So, uh, but I use the Learn Lab for that. I use the Learn Lab for my system administration classes, uh, where we learn about administering systems, backing things up, uh, running commands. We do it mostly on Linux. We use EC2 extensively. Um, we do our tests uh, through that, um, through the Learner Lab. We. Uh, also use S3 websites uh, in that class. We do lambdas. Uh, we take in my in the first level uh, the system administration essentials. We actually have uh, the cloud foundations as part of that class as a module of that class. Um, but we're doing most of it in the learner lab. I should make this a little bigger. Um, So we use the Learner Lab for a lot. And I'm using the Associate so that I can do Lambdas and stuff. The, the lower level one, I, I've had some other issues with. So uh, Learner Lab, I use Cloud Foundations in my assistant admin. The second level sysadmin course is almost extensively in Learner Labs. Um, and we're going digging more into mostly Linux. Um, but we do some more with Cloud. But then I branch off and we do, uh, uh, we have another class that's uh, networking services cloud uh, architecting. So, and we actually use this course for the majority of that class. And then we do some project work and some other uh, homegrown assignments. And that's really good. This, this gives, with the information they learn that what we do in the, the earlier required class of the essentials and then this class, uh, they should be able to pass, I mean, because they've had the foundations, they should be able, the students should be able to pass foundations. I haven't been pushing my students to do that. Uh, I don't think that a lot of the students, uh, since we don't play with it sufficiently, I don't think a lot of my students could class, pass the architecting class, uh, but I haven't, I haven't uh, tried to push them uh, to take it yet. So I, I might start doing that more uh, soon. Um, so I have multiple Cloud Foundations classes uh, because if they're working on a, in an actual projects class, sometimes uh, they're in a second one too. Um, so besides that, I'm using data analytics and machine learning together uh, to do a, a course with some other supplemental material and projects uh, just to introduce uh, students to data analytics and machine learning, but this machine learning course is is much is more for researchers, um, but it, it it's good to get the, help them get that level of understanding. So so far, the main classes I'm using are cloud foundations, uh, cloud architecting. I'm adding data analytics and machine learning, uh, and then of course the the learner lab. Uh, I'm playing with others, and I, I hope to um, continue to play with them. So now let me talk about some of the issues, and we're going to do this by going into the, the Learner Lab. Um, 
And I have a video on issues, so I'm going to be repeating some of that, but we're going to be uh, discussing more uh, as well. So one of the biggest issues that I see is when students come into the, the lab, they uh, don't log out of everything properly. So uh, once we're in the lab, which sometimes it takes three clicks to get in here, uh, that's uh, on my other video. I will leave that video around so that uh, you can see that. Uh, but the first time you come to this, for some reason, for some people, it takes three clicks. Um, and you have to just click on the, the learner lab and click on different things to get it to eventually work. But once you've done that, it, it's fine. Uh, starting the lab, the learner lab starts pretty fast. Some of the other labs, especially the machine learning labs, take a while to start. Um, so the AWS, uh, by the way, to launch it in the Learn Lab, it's here. In some of the other um, courses, it's actually over here. So there's a little difference in uh, the way the courses are set up. So the biggest problem I see is students come in here, they start to do something, and they don't sign out, and they just close this window. Okay, And then we end the lab. Well, that's fine. Um, but what we're going to be having going on here is uh, it's going to be creating a new playground for us this next time we start it. So it's, it's ending the lab. It's going to take a little bit to end this lab. Um, but we're going to start it. We're going to show you what happens. I don't think it'll let us start it yet, but we'll see. Um, so the thing is, I didn't log out of AWS. So when I start it again, I'm going to be logging in and especially, and I haven't done this as much with the Learner Lab, so hopefully this, this dies for me uh, like I expect. But the other labs, they're creating a new environment for you. They're giving you a new number. Uh, the Learner Lab, that might not be the case. So this may actually work. Um, but when we click on AWS to get in, you get an error that says um, uh, account unauthorized something. Like click here to log out. And that is in my other video, and I'll link it to, uh, below as well because there's something that I'm not going to be able to do in here. So while this is creating, let me talk about a couple of the other issues. And and this this one uh, is not in the video, the prior video. Sometimes the labs don't create properly, um, and I don't know why. And I've dug into a, a one or two of them, and it'll say failed to create um, when you're looking at the log for the students. And then it makes it so that they can't actually um, they can't actually do something in the lab. And so they get kind of frustrated, they get stuck, and it just won't work. And it's not the, a problem with what they're doing, it's a problem with the lab. So they have to they have to come out, they need to end the lab, and sometimes they can start it and it'll work, but I've seen sometimes where they need to end the lab, click reset, and then start the lab, uh, and then it seems to work. Now, reset's different in some of the um, assignments. So it's different in the learner lab versus in the, in the other lab. So let's click this, and let's see if we get our error. So we didn't because this is um, the learner lab. So I will come out here. I'll end this lab. I'm going to leave student view and we're going to come into another class because I do want to show you that. We'll do Cloud Foundations, this one. We'll just grab any of these modules. Oftentimes the students are working through um, different modules anyway. Uh, and so they've done one lab and they go on to another one. So we'll get into this lab. So this is introduction to AWS IAM. And this is where we're going to actually see the three click problem. Cool. So you see it's, it's just blank. So I'm going to come here and I can click on module four again. And I can click on that lab a second time. And it's going to show me terms and conditions because I haven't looks like I haven't done a lab in this class. So um, 
So scroll down to the bottom, I agree. And then it pulls up this window, which, yeah. So you come out and go back in again. Oh shoot, right there, that one. But once I've seen that in one lab for a class, it's it's each course, each course it, it, it have it. Um, I don't see it again. So this you'll see where this is the where the AI, AWS is over here versus over here. So this is how it is in most of the courses, but the learner lab for some reason it's over here. So while this lab is starting, um, I, by far the biggest problem I've had uh, is students thinking that they're doing it right and doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, uh, and they're doing it wrong over and over and over again. Uh, sometimes. It's just because they, um, they they're, oftentimes they're skipping something, but other times it's because they see something that they think they need to do that's not in the instructions and they, that they do. Okay, so this is started. Oh, wait, no, in creation. Um, I'm going to pause it for a little bit. I don't know how long this is going to take to, to uh, start. So I'll come back when it's ready. Okay, it's ready, finally. Uh, glad I can pause it so you don't have to wait through that. So we close that, and then we click on AWS here. So we're expecting to see an error because I didn't sign out of the Learner Lab. So this is the error that you see. It says to log out, click here. So I'm going to click here, and it's logged me out, but I'm still not in. So I have to close this window, and I can come back here and click on it again. Now, you can also get the, the details and the AWS URL string, but... Uh, I'm just going to click on it again, and then I'm in. Okay, so you get in there, you can't get in. It's probably because you didn't log out of the last lab. Uh, so what you need to do is whenever you're done, come here and sign out. Okay, and then make sure that you end your labs. Um, so there is, uh, most of these labs will close everything and you're good. Uh, let me talk about another issue. We need to go to a different course for this. So, in the course, Cloud Architecting. I'm going to jump into Student View so we don't see anything. Um, there is a, a, at the very end, not the sandbox. Capstone. There's this capstone project uh, lab, and it has a gateway in it that if you start that lab early on and then the student ends it, it'll shut things down, but that gateway will be charging their account and they're going to run out of money. So uh, I, you need to warn your students not to start the capstone project. Um, until later in the semester, because when it's when it's down, it's charging them. Um, as an instructor, you can see uh, how much the uh, students have been charged for what thing, and I check that uh, on a rare occasion. So uh, I usually only see see these if uh, it, if there's something else I'm looking into. But yeah, I, I've had one student that ran out of out of their funds for this uh, for this uh, pro capstone project for an initial attempt. So they get, I think, two attempts. So I think they're okay. Uh, otherwise, you just reach out to a a AWS support and they can help fix it. Now, most of these courses, of course, talk about certification and there's a way to get a discount for certifications. Um, and then there's a sandbox environment to play. This is okay. I usually the, have them use the, the Learner Lab, but the Learner Lab, they get $100 to play with. I think the Sandbox and stuff, it's less than that. Um, but it's also not as... It, it, there's usually more things you can do in the Learner Lab. Um, although not always. Okay. I even, with some custom assignments, I've had them use a specific lab um, for a custom assignment uh, in, in the machine learning class because the, the Sandbox just was not sufficient. Uh, so... 
the last thing uh, I wanted to, wanted to mention is if your students pass everything in AWS at 80%, they can claim a badge. And then they can post that badge on their LinkedIn profile or whatever it is to say, hey, I completed this course with 80%. Um, it's not a certification, but it is uh, something that helps people be aware that they have some knowledge of, uh, of a certain thing. So and this would be Amazon Web Services. So uh, most of the courses have these digital badges. Of course, the Learn Labs do not. Um, but this is something that my students really enjoy. So for the most part, ending your labs will save, the, uh, save you on the money and stuff. It's a good idea. Be careful with the capstone project in the um, cloud architecting course. And make sure you're signing out. And if a lab just isn't working, it's probably because either you're doing something wrong, which have uh, someone help you with that, uh, try and identify it, or the lab didn't create properly. And once again, you just end the lab and you can try and restart it, or you can end the lab, reset it, and, and start it. And that seems to have fixed most of the problems. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. Have a good day.